Well, I want to thank everyone for hanging in with us here. It's the last uh, regular session before our closing session of this Evergreen Conference. I want to thank again the Evergreen Community Development, in, uh, Development Initiative and Mobius for being some of our two most wonderful sponsors. I hope everyone got a chance to visit the sponsors in the expo area and at least drop by and say thanks for supporting the conference. Um, we, we could not do it without them. And I'm excited that we are, we have Galen Charlton with us this afternoon for implications of earworms for evergreen metadata. I will be dropping the link to the uh, captions in the chat. And uh, if there are any other questions as we go along, we can go ahead and put those in the chat as well. And I'm sure Galen will pause for questions. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, so good afternoon, good morning, and uh, possibly good night uh, to uh, to everybody, uh, depending on uh, time zones. Uh, my name is Galen Troughton. I am the implementation and IT manager at uh, the Equinox Open Library Initiative. Um, and I am also an Evergreen uh, developer and uh, committer uh, with um, a fascination with many things, uh, but uh, including library metadata. So we will start uh, this um, presentation with a discussion of a completely different uh, area of a study, namely uh, musicology. Now, most of us are familiar with uh, the concept of uh, earworms. Uh, I don't think uh, I need to uh, define it. Um, but of course, um, it's a, something that's probably best demonstrated. Now, I've put up a quote uh, from a piece uh, by Mark Twain, um, who may have been the first uh, person uh, to suggest uh, that earworms uh, can be weaponized. Um, and if you were to search any library catalog uh, for a literary nightmare uh, and uh, decide to search it by topic, you will come to an, uh, an appalling realization. And that uh, realization is that, unfortunately, earworms are not adequately described uh, by library cataloging uh, you know, standards. Do you want an LCSH, uh, Library of Congress uh, subject heading uh, for earworms? I'm afraid you can't uh, have one. Uh, in fact, if uh, you uh, do uh, you know, some uh, poking around uh, MASH, uh, the medical subject headings, there isn't uh, even so much as a heading for involuntary musical imagery. And I must uh, say, this is uh, quite uh, disappointing. But of course, like I said, um, sometimes it's uh, best uh, to, you know, demonstrate this by example. Or example. Or example. Or example. But fortunately, um, you all can be grateful that uh, I'm far too shy to actually sing uh, to you. Um, so I will not uh, be uh, infecting you uh, with uh, any earworms uh, today. And that is uh, my promise. However, there are in fact, uh, you know, things uh, that are worse uh, than uh, earworms. Um, and those are library catalog earworms. So, here we have a perfectly good book, um, The Earworms uh, by Carrie uh, Kilgore, um, with a catalog uh, entry um, that uh, has uh, been, um, shall we say, sadly missed a type. And this will be the focus uh, of um, my presentation is, the dreaded earworm, why, you know, with a why, the embodiment of library catalog errors, bearer of the flame of uh, failing to find stuff, or at least uh, the hot ears of uh, embarrassed uh, catalogers. And 
this will actually relate uh, to the you know, vital libraries uh, and healthy, uh, healthy evergreen theme of uh, the conference, but I will get there in a bit. Um, by the way, uh, in general, I am keeping an eye on comments. Um, this is meant to, to be more of a discussion uh, than a lecture from uh, on high. Um, so please uh, feel free to ask uh, questions um, and uh, I will get to them, uh, you know, when I see them and uh, where it makes uh, sense uh, you know, with uh, the flow. Um, and yes, um, there will in fact be a Rick roll. Um, 10 points uh, to the first uh, person uh, who uh, spots it. So when we're talking about um, metadata quality issues um, and with a particular focus on actual errors as uh, distinguished uh, from say uh, issues of in a completeness um, there's are you know four factors to think about uh, when dealing with them but i should um, you know step back a bit uh, and um, speak on the distinction i'm making between an error and say an omission um, a cataloging record um, that has um, not as many subject headings as uh, you might want it to. That may not be ideal, um, but it isn't necessarily uh, an error. Um, it, of course, depends on the level of the cataloging um, that you need to do or that you can afford to do uh, for your uh, particular circumstances. But if we focus uh, today on earworms, AKA, uh, errors, um, some things we need to know is the best area, i.e. how these earworms uh, get uh, classified. And then once you know their species, actually finding them um, and accounting them. Of course, once you've found them, the point of the exercise is not to uh, you know stare at these uh, errors, if at all possible, uh, but to fix uh, them. And then going beyond fixing them uh, where they occur uh, to working to prevent them uh, from multiplying. So if uh, we look uh, at uh, the first question, how to classify uh, these uh, earworms, um, you know, here's the beginnings of uh, a list of um, you know some issues that you can run across now of course you know typos and uh, misspellings afflict us all you know, uh, afflict us all um, there's also a matter of outdated uh, you know outdated headings um, with uh, for example the change uh, of uh, illegal um, you know, aliens uh, to a better heading being uh, perhaps one of uh, the more recent uh, and uh, topical examples. Uh, and congratulations uh, to Debbie uh, and Sarah uh, for uh, catching uh, the Rick roll uh, first. Um, but of course, um, as far as outdated uh, coding is uh, concerned, um, we, you know, have the issue that entropy affects us all, but especially mark uh, records. Um, another um, source of errors uh, or class of errors are simply inconsistencies and disagreements. Um, and this can be particularly prevalent uh, in the case of describing so what is the format uh, of a title um, anyway? You know, obviously uh, the physical format or, you know, uh, you know, physical or electronic format of a resource can matter quite a lot uh, to patrons. Um, but 
the, if you look at a Mark Bibb record and uh, the um, items and volumes uh, and call numbers that are attached uh, to it, uh, you don't have to work too hard to, to come up with easily a half dozen um, ways of expressing the format of an item incorrectly. Um, so that can include the fixed field decoding in the record. Um, it uh, can include um, the three uh, you know, XX fields, particularly the new RDA ones. Um, but of course, we shouldn't uh, forget about uh, the um, humble 300 uh, field, since any um, statement about the physical format um, does not need uh, to necessarily correspond uh, with the fixed fields or the 3 3 axes. And then the situation gets worse uh, when you look at um, the item uh, and uh, you know call number records, since of course on the call number side you can have call number pre uh, prefixes and suffixes uh, that make uh, claims about physical format. Um, you can have shelving locations and circ modifiers uh, that also uh, make uh, claims uh, about the physical format. Um, so. With six different ways uh, to make statements uh, about the physical format, um, that gives you six uh, different uh, ways uh, to be wrong. Um, so uh, another uh, example of uh, a type of earworm is simply bad links. Now, of course, this also ties into the problem of entropy uh, because a perfectly good link uh, in 2005 uh, may be a very bad link uh, in 2021. And in fact, uh, the probability is that a 16-year-old link probably is a bad. Um, duplication, of course, is another um, you know, area of the concern, uh, especially in uh, consortial catalogs. Um, you know, Incompleteness, um, in some cases, uh, can be uh, can that be uh, an error uh, if um, one part of a record expects a field um, that uh, is uh, not actually present, or if uh, you have, um, say, an absence of uh, an await field uh, or other fixed uh, fields. So, thank you. Uh, uh, you know, Janet and uh, Elaine uh, for um, you know mentioning uh, examples of how the O7 uh, you know has uh, changed uh, coding uh, over uh, the uh, years. Um, so yes, DVDs and laser discs, indeed, uh, very different uh, things. By the way, there is uh, a uh, channel on YouTube called Technology Connections. Um, which I recommend uh, if uh, you're interested in uh, the history of uh, video discs. Um, quite uh, interesting. Um, and then, of course, um, there's the most uh, difficult category of e earworms uh, to um, consider. And I confess to making a mistake on this uh, slide. Um, I put it down as the failure of cataloging records to conform to the real world. But of course, that's backwards. The real problem is the failure of the real world to uh, conform uh, to our metadata. Um, of course, that last uh, you know, question of earworm is one that for the most part, I'm going to blithely ignore. Um, because ultimately, if you need to check against uh, the real world, particularly uh, for physical materials, um, you, of course, are best advised uh, to have uh, the item in hand. Um, so I'm a programmer, uh, not a, a cataloger. So I'm not uh, dealing with uh, items in hand. So the focus of this, uh, you know, of uh, this presentation will be on the things uh, that we can deal with um, via a combination of human effort uh, and uh, software. So 
you know, given um, an incomplete uh, categorization of their catalog errors, by the way, um, uh, although I'm sure that uh, there's uh, some discussion in the elaborate literature about this, to my knowledge, there isn't a, a controlled vocabulary uh, for catalog, uh, you know, for cataloging errors. This is an, uh, this is an opportunity for us uh, to uh, create one. Um, but once you have a notion of what sorts of um, uh, issues uh, you're uh, looking for, then comes uh, the question of okay, how do you uh, find uh, you know uh, uh, these errors? And then, of course, you know, uh, there's also a level of do you care? Um, yeah, in any given case. So, one of uh, the possible ways of uh, doing it is simply actually using the catalog. Um, so, serendipity in libraries has absolutely nothing uh, to do with. Um, you know, users are finding uh, things that they need, uh, but uh, didn't uh, know that they wanted uh, yet. Um, it's really about um, promoting systems uh, to um, find mistakes in our metadata. So here's an example of uh, doing an evergreen search uh, for earworms. Um, and um, because this is a very small database, this nifty new uh, feature that was added in uh, Evergreen 3.7 of single word spelling of suggestions is sadly um, not, um, is a, you know, sadly uh, thinking that uh, the word earworms with an O is misspelled. But of course, this is sort of a feedback, um, whether it's, you know, coming from, you know, tech services say people searching the catalog, um, colleagues and other library departments, or patrons uh, is, uh, of course, an excellent uh, way to find earworms, either blatant uh, typos uh, such as uh, this one, or cases uh, of, um, you know, results showing up either unexpectedly or not showing up unexpectedly. Um, so, so of course, one thing about you know serendipitous uh, earworm uh, discovery is it's not exactly efficient. Um, you probably you know you know there's of course uh, the trope uh, that all patrons uh, believe um, that uh, librarians uh, do nothing but read their books uh, all day. Well, that's a clearly false. Um, you could imagine a trope uh, where catalogers do nothing but search the catalog uh, all day, but well, that's also wrong. Um, but of course, that's where things like your search logs um, can come into play. Um, if uh, you, um, you know, preferably after uh, anonymization, um, keep an eye on the searches that patrons are actually doing, particularly uh, the ones uh, that uh, result in zero hits, um, that can be a source of somewhat more systematically using the catalog uh, to locate um, earworms. And it's uh, a little more efficient uh, because if you're basing it on actual searches uh, conducted by real live uh, patrons, um, that um, is a signal that those sort of searches most likely matter to those uh, patrons. And if metadata errors are getting in uh, the way of their results, it's, um, you know, they probably uh, should get a little higher priority uh, for fixing. Of course, uh, another uh, retail way of looking at it, of uh, finding earworms um, is uh, to, um, you know, do it in uh, the Mark Record Editor. You know, obviously, depending on your workflow, um, you hopefully have uh, you know some opportunities uh, to do uh, review, uh, particularly if uh, you're importing records uh, from OCLC uh, or um, you know Z3950 sources on a one by one basis. Um, some of you may uh, remember from 
um, a cataloging working uh, group at meeting a, a couple of months ago. I showed off uh, an example of using a Perl tool called MarkLent uh, to critique uh, Mark uh, records. Um, and so this is um, an example of what it can look like uh, in practice. Um, and this, by the way, is something that I do intend to finish up and get into Evergreen 3.8 um, so that there's at least a starting point uh, for uh, uh, putting in, uh, you know, record validation, uh, you know, beyond authority headings uh, in Evergreen. Um, and so this, uh, you know, gives you um, potentially something to work from. Um, you can look at a record, hit uh, the lint uh, button, um, and either fix uh, things uh, or disagree uh, with it. Um, and of course, it's important uh, to acknowledge uh, two things. Both, all library catalogs are local. Secondly, all library catalogs uh, are global. Um, the locality means that um, for your particular patron population, some of uh, the uh, cataloging rules may not matter, may need to be abandoned, or may need uh, to be banned. Of course, all catalogs are global, or at least most of catalogs are global, um, because um, you know of the copy cataloging and shared bibli bibliographic uh, databases as well as the consideration that um, even if you don't have the Z3950 turned on for your uh, your Evergreen system, um, you know, any other library in the world can always uh, copy, uh, copy a catalog uh, from you. Um, so, you know, Mark Lint as a um, one by one, um, you know, way of, uh, you know, dealing with, um, and finding errors uh, is, uh, you, know, you know, a tool uh, that's uh, coming. Of course, there's also the uh, traditional authority uh, validation, uh, you know, feature uh, in Evergreen, um, where of course, um, uh, authority records can help uh, reduce earworms. Um, a typo in a title might not uh, matter too much, a typo in an author's name, you know, could at minimum um, be kind of a personal insult uh, to uh, that author. So authority records, of course, can help uh, avoid earworms or at least outsource uh, the blame uh, for typos uh, to the Library of Congress. Um, so um, the importance of that uh, perhaps uh, cannot uh, be, uh, you know, uh, overstated. <laughs> So, in one sense, what I've shown you is kind of scratching the surface uh, for retail or record by record um, earworm discovery. But of course, you know, all of us are dealing with catalogs uh, that have more than 10 titles in them. So, you know, there's ultimately going to be, I think, much more of a need for wholesale earworm hunting. And I think to give a preview of, you know, a later section of my talk, um, I think this is an area where um, Evergreen could benefit from, um, you know, you know uh, additional enhancements. But of course, you know, if uh, we're looking uh, for wholesale uh, earworms, um, one you know key um, you know a factor uh, or tool will of course uh, be your reporting engine. Um, so, what I've uh, put here um, is an example of an SQL report, um, and this actually should. Um, Work more or less as is in almost every in almost evergreen every evergreen database, um, and what this is saying is, let's look at the search format as extracted from the mark record, and compare it to what the shelving location 
uh, says. And if you look at this uh, example, you come to the inevitable conclusion that in one sense, the concerto um, da uh, data set uh, that's used for evergreen uh, testing um, is absolutely terrible. Yeah, in part uh, that's intentional, but in part uh, that's not necessarily the greatest of things. But if you look at a record, um, you know, look at the, a you know set of books, and you see book records being in locations like adult seven day DVD or adult VHS. Well, you come into a question of are you looking at horses thundering by or zebras? The the zebra, of course, would be um, examples of multi format records. Um, so, you know, maybe these are all legitimately books uh, that uh, happen uh, to have uh, DVDs. But of course, the more likely um, guess is that um, these are actually um, horses in the terms of, okay, oops, those uh, six uh, you know, different ways of expressing a physical format have struck. So this uh, sort of uh, report, um, is uh, something that you know? You know, if you have the resources and staffing to do systematic record quality improvement in your Evergreen database, um, this sort of a report of looking for inconsistencies is uh, definitely something I would recommend. Um, and this can be done at several levels. Um, for example, we could be looking at combinations of location and circa modifier. Um, and, you know, you know, and uh, I think, you know, in general, you know, doing wholesale um, earworm uh, hunting via reports um, is, um, you know, a, you know, way to uh, express uh, some creativity. And, you know, again, hearkening to a future uh, portion of this uh, presentation, um, this is um, kind of a question and challenge uh, that uh, I uh, would like to throw out uh, to the Evergreen uh, community. And that is send me, or actually more specifically, send uh, the cataloging working group, all of uh, your examples of uh, reports that you've uh, created uh, that uh, are in the area of uh, data quality. You know, I would be really interested uh, to see uh, what uh, people uh, are up to. Um, so um, thank you, Katie. Um, I'm, you know, that's an, an, an excellent example, you know, of somebody doing this uh, sort of uh, report uh, already. Now, for other, uh, you know, cases of earworm discovery, um, Evergreen already provides um, built-in uh, tools. So for example, the link uh, checker um, is something that um, has been uh, uh, you know, uh, available uh, in Evergreen since you know, one of the early uh, 2.12 um, uh, releases. Um, and this is you know, a perfect example of um, something uh, that um, is um, good to run periodically um, and uh, of course uh, to update uh, URLs um, where possible. Now if you're taking a really close uh, look at uh, the slides, um, at this uh, slide, you may also have a pretty good idea of uh, a bug uh, that I've been uh, working on uh, recently, um, you know, i.e. Uh, one of the ones around um, dealing with people trying to slip uh, JavaScript uh, into Mark records. You know, and of course, um, you know, another um, thing about wholesale earworm discovery is that sometimes you can take uh, your retail discovery uh, and extend it. So what you're looking at on this slide is 
it's possible to take uh, the mark uh, lint uh, error de uh, detection and turn it into um, you know something that you can use in your database uh, to make a query uh, from. Um, so if you you know so in other words, this is a way of running mark lint uh, against your entire database and then deciding okay, what do you actually care about or what do you want to uh, prioritize? Um, so this is also something we'll, that will probably be more of uh, a contrib or something that might show up uh, in the Equinox uh, migration uh, tools. But this is also uh, another resource uh, available to you uh, to find uh, these uh, things uh, in a batch. So if you've located uh, your earworms, um, what are um, various uh, ways of uh, dealing with them? So of course, in the simple case, um, you know, of uh, just a typo, uh, you know, a typo in something that you've originally cataloged, you know, the remediation is to just go in and fix uh, the record already. Um, but of course, um, you know, much of the time you you will have uh, a a flock uh, or a herd or whatever collective that noun you choose to use of uh, earworms. Um, so, with uh, respect uh, to um, batch operations, um, there are a number of approaches. You know, one would be simply saying, okay, um, let's say uh, your workflow is based on Library of Congress or OCLC. Um, you could potentially uh, address uh, issues uh, by periodically refreshing uh, batches of records uh, from them. Thank you, uh, Carissa. Uh, the uh, official um, collective uh, term uh, for a group of earworms is now uh, officially an UG of earworms. Excellent. So um, another uh, approach is um, to export your records, fix them, and then re-import them. And this uh, would be, um, I think, uh, a good way to make use of tools such as Mark Edit. While Evergreen does have a batch editing you know, functionality, um, it is, uh, of course, um, limited uh, as uh, compared to what Mark Edit uh, can do and what other command line and server tools uh, you know I can uh, do. Um, so you know this is uh, something that um, you know you don't have to be stuck within the evergreen software uh, ecosystem. Um, you can make use of existing uh, tools uh, outside of evergreen. Of course, Evergreen does have a mark uh, batch edit uh, feature that uh, can do some things. Um, and there are also various uh, command line and server uh, tools. Um, and I'm seeing in the chat um, that it uh, sounds like um, uh, Blake uh, and Liu Weldon uh, have uh, been working on uh, you know, some uh, tools um, that are presumably running from uh, the server side. Uh, to help um, do cataloging uh, reports uh, and uh, cataloging uh, error reports and uh, do uh, you know cleanup. Um, and that is also something um, that's present in uh, the Equinox migration tools uh, for you know certain uh, uh, certain uh, cases of uh, or classes of uh, earworms. So um, the mark uh, batch edit uh, tool, um, you know, is uh, an example of, um, you know, something that can do certain uh, limited uh, operations. And here I will uh, place uh, my fate uh, in the hands of uh, the computer and actually um, do a, a little bit uh, of uh, a live, uh, you know, demonstration. So that's, uh, not that much, as a bump up uh, the uh, font size. Um, so one of uh, the um, 
things uh, about the Concerto dataset um, is uh, it has uh, you know a lot of records coming directly from uh, the Library of Congress, um, which have fields that matter a lot for LC's internal workflow, uh, but don't matter uh, a, a bit uh, for uh, anybody else. So the 906 field uh, is an example of those. So we can take uh, a search uh, for records that have 906 uh, fields, select uh, all of them, say, let's go at uh, the, uh, the basket uh, to a bucket. And then once we've uh, created uh, this, uh, you know, uh, this uh, bucket, uh, double check uh, that it's in good shape. It is. And then, you know, from here, um, we can go ahead uh, and do a patch update, in this case, to say, get rid of uh, the 906 uh, field. Um, and I note, uh, by the way, for anybody uh, who's looking uh, for an excuse uh, to um, write a launchpad a ticket uh, based on my presentation, um, the label add merge rule should probably be changed uh, when the, uh, this is uh, being used as a part of uh, the um, Mark uh, patch edit interface. Um, I know why, it's, why it says merge rule, um, since merging and batch editing and evergreen you know, have kind of uh, similar underlying, uh, you know, uh, underpinnings, but it doesn't quite make sense uh, to use that as a label here. But in any event, um, you know, this uh, gives us uh, the ability to watch a, a green uh, progress bar uh, move uh, from right to left. And then, you know, we can redo the catalog uh, search and in principle, see that uh, we've um, deleted uh, this offending uh, field. So it's important to emphasize that there is a lot more that I wish uh, that Evergreen Mark uh, Batch Edit uh, could do. But for certain types of operations um, where the error might be um, do, you know, having uh, a, a field uh, that shouldn't be there or doing certain kinds of uh, string changes, this can be an effective uh, way of uh, dealing with, um, you know, you know, with a certain uh, you know, types of errors. So let's go back uh, to the uh, slide. I will celebrate uh, the fact uh, that the live demo actually uh, worked. Um, so. Let's uh, go ahead uh, and move on. Now, of course, the question of uh, uh, dealing with uh, earworms um, is ultimately really an economic and management uh, question in one sense. Um, the best uh, earworm is one that didn't uh, exist uh, in the first place. So of course, there's uh, a question of you know, finding uh, the best uh, possible sources uh, for copy cataloging, ideally without um, paying uh, exorbitant uh, fees uh, for it. Um, you know, and of course, imported records, uh, particularly from, uh, you know, uh, e resource vendors and so on, do have a reputation uh, for not necessarily being uh, the best uh, overall. Um, so, you know, this can be an example where um, succeeding in convincing uh, a record vendor to do better can sometimes uh, be uh, the best uh, way of uh, controlling earworms. But of course, ongoing data quality needs uh, to be reported on, uh, you know, authority control if uh, you can, um, uh, you know, afford uh, batch authority control and record enhancement services uh, can help. Uh, and of course, um, training. And it's been both heartening and good uh, and interesting to see uh, over the um, uh, past uh, several years, 
uh, an increase in the number of evergreen uh, consortia uh, that are um, doing a formal training and certification programs uh, for cataloging for their members. And of course, uh, another um, aspect is making sure that you have local standards uh, defined and that uh, you know what sorts of earworms you care about or don't uh, care about. So, but of course, um, there are, you know, I mentioned economics. Um, and that leads to a hidden, a hidden dragon. And the name of that uh, dragon is uh, prioritization. Um, you know, you know, since of course, you know, nobody has the staff or budget to attain a perfect catalog. And of course, a perfect catalog is a process. Uh, and, uh, you know, you know, a far future goal, but not something that uh, you will actually achieve. Um, entropy, if nothing else, uh, will make a fools of us all. Uh, of us all. But of course, one of the things about discovery is it's sometimes, or can be often uh, the case, that it's better to have an incomplete uh, or even bad record uh, than no record at all. Um, so, you know, there can sometimes be a trade off that, yes, you may really uh, need to. to load uh, the um, crappy set of e-resource of records uh, because that may be the only way to get it into Evergreen. Um, and there may or may not uh, be uh, approaches to that you search the vendor's native database and Evergreen simultaneously. Um, another factor for, pri for prioritization is what actually matters for functionality uh, as the patrons and uh, your uh, you know, library colleagues um, actually use uh, the system. A one letter typo in a content note may not matter as much as going through and making sure that um, uh, record uh, you know, material format uh, is consistently uh, you know coded, uh, particularly in areas where patrons are actively placing hold of requests. Um, another aspect of prioritization and functionality is your particular indexing uh, rules and attribute uh, definitions. Um, if you don't particularly index a field at all, it might not matter if it uh, is, uh, you know, correct. That said, um, there can be a subtle trap here. The fixed field uh, that you've ignored uh, for the past 15 years um, could suddenly become super important um, with future evergreen functionality or future uh, iOS functionality. And uh, of course, um, when the likes of Aqua browser and so on showed up in a mar marketplace uh, and actually started using uh, fixed fields uh, uh, more so than some of the second generation IOSs. Um, that did point out um, to a lot of libraries that completely ignoring uh, the fixed uh, fields um, was a false uh, economy. But you know, but that's where there can be uh, some hard uh, decisions uh, to make, um, whether to, you know, go for short-term, uh, you know, uh, you know, gains versus longer-term gains that may or may not uh, ever come uh, to uh, fruition. So, the current state of uh, earworm uh, control terms uh, tools in Evergreen, well, reporting batch update, you know, things uh, like mark edit, uh, and then a whole heck of a, uh, of a lot of um, implicit knowledge in people and, you know, special scripts and so on that are, you know, you know scattered across uh, the Evergreen uh, community. Um, 
we can do better or uh, you know so and i think um one of the key things is doing better in or giving better tools for the wholesale you know, wholesale uh, case of you know the pile of gold from which uh, you need to separate the pyrite so this is where you know i'd like to first mention the conference uh, theme you know one of the vital tasks of any library is to maintain a useful catalog now whether that catalog is also your discovery system and whether it's something you're doing by yourself or in some sort of a cooperative um, mode, you know, are all legitimate uh, questions. But ultimately, um, unless your library literally contain, contains only 10 books, some sort of a discovery mechanism is uh, required. And I honestly don't think um, that it's something that can be outsourced uh, by libraries to the likes of uh, Google uh, or the publishers. And um, I think developing better metadata management tools, particularly bulk ones, will uh, help uh, promote uh, Evergreen's uh, health. So this is where I, I think um, some of uh, the discussion, you know, should happen. You know, what are some direct enhancements uh, to Evergreen that would help uh, improve data quality? Um, does Evergreen need to, to have tools to directly support metadata workflow? Um, you know, there are, of course, lots of bits and pieces uh, that Evergreen handles, ranging for, from import tools uh, to reports to, of course, the Mark Editor. But does there need, do there need to be tools that explicitly say, okay, let's encapsulate say the copy cataloging record review process um do we need some sort of chain set uh, change a set mechanism so that you can confidently do and then undo a batch of record operations you know something to reduce both the friction of it uh, and have it have assurance so that you can roll back if you've made a mistake with a batch operation um on the workflow front, is there some notion that maybe Evergreen should uh, let you set up a metadata project as a mechanism that you can track uh, in Evergreen to um, manage a relabeling uh, or um, you know hand uh, you know subject analysis or things like that? Um, there are also quality of life uh, things like. Being able to re-index uh, re um, more quickly would be good. Um, should there be standard cataloging quality reports um, available with Evergreen, you know, either directly in Evergreen or you know via you know one of the several banks of uh, Canada reports? Probably should be, um, but that's where I think um, the Evergreen cataloger community you know, including as embodied in the cataloging working group, um, has a lot to share and has a lot of uh, uh, updates to make. And then the final tool tossing out as a something on speculation, um, would we want something where you can uh, say for all of the records in your Evergreen catalog, or maybe just a subset, okay, Let's periodically grab uh, the latest and uh, greatest uh, from, say, the Library of Congress. Um, you know, can we automate um, the correction of uh, some of uh, our uh, earworms? And do I have all of the answers to that? No, uh, I have uh, some ideas, but you know, this I think is very much a community project uh, to. Come up, come up with ideas and you know automatically code and tools uh, to have Evergreen, you know, be able to do more uh, earworm remediation uh, directly. And of course, we're not an island. Um, we shouldn't uh, pretend uh, that uh, there aren't uh, other systems and services, you know, uh, that 
you know, aren't um, uh, providing um, ideas that we cannot learn from. So thank you uh, for listening. Uh, you know, you know, I hope uh, that um, the taxonomy of uh, earworms um, is um, useful to you. Um, I would be, you know, and uh, I'm totally, uh, you know, putting out uh, a t-shirt idea for uh, an UG of uh, earworms. Um, but, you know, of course, the, you know, discussion um, to uh, uh, to have, I think, among the Evergreen and Catalogina community is how do we get the dragon off the cats, I mean, catalogs back? Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Galen. <laughs> Sorry, I knew it. The, the dragon, the dragon will cat. Okay. I am together. I promise. I uh, I think we all have to head over to the closing session. So thank you, Galen, so much. That was highly enjoyable and highly useful to all of us, I am sure. And I will uh, metaphorically shoo everyone in the direction of the closing session. Thanks, everyone, for playing along for the Evergreen Conference. Really appreciate you being here. See you all next year.